outside Zoro's domain, if you use your iron boots, you can sink down into the water and you get transported directly to the Lost Woods. Kind of cool. Uh, you know, the Lost Woods actually interconnects to uh, the Goron City, to the Lost Woods. Um, so, you know, depending on, you know, if you know your way around, it's, it's kind of cool though. And right, right to the right there, there was the Goron, Goron City. Not sure, exactly sure why I went this way. There's several ways in which I could have gone. But uh, hey, we're here and we're going. So heading back out to Hyrule Field. I need my horse. Of course, my fantastic memory, I can't ever remember any of these songs. Really sad, right? Basically, it's like repetition of three notes. Three button presses that I still carry. Right. So let's call, let's call it Pona. It's really sad, isn't it? I swear it gets worse with age. So those of you who are younger than me, oh, you have some good times ahead of you. You walk into a room going, why was I here? Um, right... Wait, was that what? Anyway, you, see, you just, the little things, you just stop remembering them. Um, it is what it is. And eventually age and death will take, oh man, I am getting really dark all, all of a sudden, aren't I? Um, let's scrub that from the record. And here we go to Kakariko Village. And forget I ever said any of that. <laughs> I was watching this guy on YouTube and he just bummed me out, man. Oh, bum me. So dark. No. Um, I try to keep it real with you guys. And uh, there's zero pretense here. This is me. This is who I am. And uh, I like to keep it that way. Keep, my, keep things real. So if you like it, you like it. And if you do, subscribe. If you don't, so be it. Thank you for watching anyway. Anyway, all right, so we have a story, don't we? She has cuckoos, cuckoos. Anyway, she has chickens. And she's going to give us one of them to hatch. That's easy enough. Okay, she gives us an egg. You'll see. And come the next, like, sunrise, uh, it'll hatch. So, anyway, what we've begun. It is. We borrowed a pocket egg, a pocket cocoa that cuckoo that will hatch overnight. We've begun the bigger in sword trading sequence. Okay, we're going after the big guy, the big sword. And right here, I'm playing the sun song. Okay, so it's now nighttime. If I play that again. There we go, got our chicken. Egg. Soon to be a chicken. Now, what did I say? We need to be morning. So let's bring the sun. Playing the sun song again. Before, oh, look, a chicken hatched. It's the miracle of life. I love this game. How do we make it happy? By using it to wake somebody up, of all things. Remember this guy? Back in episode two, when we were at Hyrule Castle. This is uh, Mulan. Uh, anyway, the girl from Long Island. Yeah, Malin. Uh, it's her dad. By the way, Mario look like right there. That's a little Easter egg. That guy totally looks like Mario. Uh, his counterpart sort of looks like Luigi. Or Waluigi, possibly. So now that we have a happy chicken, sounds like a Chinese entree, we bring it back to her. Oh, 
Oh, it looks pretty happy. You must have awakened an extremely lazy guy. You're a good cook keeper. You're a good, say that five times fast. Um, his name is Kujiro, and he used to be my brother's Kuko. So, here's a cool thing. She has another one for us, and she's asking, do we want to keep it? Uh, yeah. That's like getting a blue lobster. Um, yeah, we now have a blue Kuko. So with that, we have to make our way all the way back to the Lost Woods. Yeah. We were just there. All right. It's easy enough. We have Epona. But yes, this is all part of the trading sequence. We're trying to get the coolest sword ever. It's strong. It's super effective against enemies. The bigger in sword. And this is what we're... Uh, we're racing to get right now, so to speak. In a little bit, with our timed parts of this, we will be racing. Because they'll put time limits on us to deliver certain ingredients. Anyway, you know. So, what was that part? I don't know. First or second part of this whole trading sequence? Um, so now we are delivering this. So yeah, we got the Kuko. That would be one. And then we wake him up, we get the blue Kuko. This is one this is two maybe and now we're bringing the blue coco to lost woods after that we'll get something else that we have to go deliver um and it goes on and on and on until you get a big happy goron who will actually build us the sweetest sword ever uh at least in this game yes i love the master sword the sword that seals the darkness uh, the sword, the light bringer, if you will. Um, yeah. Come on, it's the one that slays Ganon in the end. However, that bigger in sword is... Here we go. <gasps> Why? Normally a nice guy like me can tame you, which means... Look at that guy, by the way. You must be a nice guy. Please, Mr. Nice Guy, please deliver this stuff to the old hag in the poster shop in K Kakarika Village. Man, he looks awful. Like a walking dead or something, or uh, something out of Game of Thrones. All right, this will disappear. You have to do it in a hurry. Okay, so this is our first timed part of this trading sequence. We have an ingredient that we must quickly deliver. got an odd mushroom. Mario? Uh, a fresh mushroom. Alright, so there it is. Our three minutes has begun. It is counting down as we speak. Luckily, we planted a magic bean when we were a child, when we were a kid, allowing us quick, easy access to get right out of the Lost Woods, back to Hyrule Field. We're there. Also, big part of this, Epona. She is our equine race car to get through Hyrule Field. Here we go. Let's see if the stupid stumps won't stop. There, stumps always get in my way. The bottom parts of these trees. Great camera angle. Uh, yeah, like, what was I saying? <laughs> and off we go. I can't stand that. The invisible walls. There were some. There's always have been some design flaws in Hyrule Field. Um, they annoy the heck out of me. Would love a remake, Nintendo, if you're listening. Oh, if this were remade, pixel for pixel, line for line, character after character, you know, over, just comb it over and make it perfect. Oh, with the same story? It, it, it would be... I'd just lose my mind. It'd be amazing. 
So the potion shop is only open during the day. And guess what? Yeah, it's nighttime. And just to prove it to you. Yep, close till morning. So what do we have to do? Play the sun song. It's always funny how the way the day resets, you get kicked out of the village, if you will. And now you have to make your way all over. It's fine. We have time. Um, luckily, we had a couple shortcuts and quick ways to get here. So time is currently on our side. And we can make it. But still, yeah, you can be deep into a village and play that sun song and get kicked out of whatever entrance you used. And... Interesting. All right. Look at this. There's a back door. When you come out the back door, this is really the one of the two ways to get to this one back door of this other house. And here is our potion shop. If you see that fool, give this to him. It's the strongest medicine I've ever produced. However, this potion will not work on a monster. Noted. And we received an odd potion, which she made from the odd mushroom. Uh, the special crop. Um, take it to the guy and take it back to the Lost Woods. So yeah, here we go again. They say that there's no medicine that can cure a fool. I guess that's true. Painfully true, unfortunately. All right, off we go to deliver the odd potion. We have to go back to the Lost Woods to deliver this. Not really a time, no time limit this time. We just gotta go do it. I can actually find my way out of the village. Here we go. Epona should be waiting for us. And then we will race over to the Lost Woods, deliver the odd potion, where we will receive our next. There's uh, something else we have to deliver. Uh, this, this, uh, kind of a complicated sequence of events. Uh, the game really makes you work for it. But it's worth it. It's worth it. I have to admit, the first few times in which I played this game, I never bothered. I mean, probably the first time I never even knew it existed. Uh, this, well, I just talked about uh, just talking about invisible walls. So annoying. Uh, Nintendo, remake. Please. Please. Oh. The countless hours I would spend. And really what I want... I want the perfect blending of open world and linear storytelling. So think Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, mixed with the story and the linear nature of Ocarina. Or Majora's, maybe. And some of the other ones, but I really, I'm thinking like Majora slash, sorry, Ocarina slash Tears of the Kingdom. Right? If those two could be blended into a perfect, seamless, nearly perfect Zelda game, mind-blowing. And I know they have attempted that, but uh, that's what I would like. Here we go, Lost Woods. Hey! This guy isn't here anymore. Anybody who comes into the forest will be lost. Everybody will become Staphos. Everybody Staphos. So let's show her the eye potion. That guy isn't here anymore. Yes, we know. Thank you, young lady. 
This medicine is made with forest mushrooms. Give it back. Sure. Take it, please. And look what we get. We get the poacher saw. What are we going to do with a saw? Well, off to Garuda Valley. There's a certain carpenter in which we must give the sword. Or <laughs> the, the saw. So, uh, alright, back on our, our little transport leaf here. Our shortcut out. No, not a timed, but who doesn't love a shortcut? Let's find our trusty horse. There she is. Hey, hey, Pona. Let's go, girl. Our goals go directly across the map. We started in the east and we are heading due west. Pretty much westward. Avoiding the fences along the way. And But yes, we're heading west to Garuda Valley. It's a weird thing. Sometimes these fences act like an invisible wall. And it annoys the crap out of me, and I, like, opponent won't jump them. And then sometimes she'll just jump them. Like, yeah, I got it. At least I've experienced. I wonder if, it, you know, leave me a comment if you've had similar experience with the fence, sometimes jumpable or not jumpable, invisible wall or not. Um, oh, and this board can be a pain in the butt, too. All right, so here we go. Love it. That's such a cool thing. the master craftsman. Those Gerudo thieves, they broke the bridge. I want to fix it, but all my workers are gone. They said working as carpenters isn't cool, so they went to Gerudo's fortress to become thieves. Hey you, if you're going to that fortress, that's major foreshadowing, by the way. We will need to go to that fortress, but not just yet. So, we present him the saw. It is his saw. And, but, all he has is a broken tool. Hmm. Yeah, take the saw. I want what you have. Here's why. And there it is. Yes, it's broken. I happen to know a master craftsman that can fix this for us. So, off we go. We've got the broken sword. Let's get it fixed. We can actually play the Bolero of Fire. As a lovely shortcut to get to Death Mountain Crater. From there, it's a hop, skip, and a jump to our master craftsman, the Goron, whom can uh, fix our sword. So there we go. Quick transport. I swear, it must be a, some kind of genetic malfunction with me that I, I I have a horrible time hitting those pots. And going the right direction, apparently. <laughs> okay, so off we go. Let's go uh, find our, our giant Goron. And he's right out here. Hey. 
my brother. Open a new store. That broken knife is surely my work. I really want to repair it, but... But because of yesterday's eruption, my eyes are irritated. These are fine eye drops to Zora's domain. Will you find them and go see King Zora? Please get the eye drops. Of course we will. If that's what it's going to take to get you to fix my sword, yeah, I'm there, buddy. So we now we have a prescription. And he has a prescription for eye drops. And King Zora is the, uh, the man that we need. Always stings. All right, so off we go. We're going to go to Zora's domain. I wish there was a way to warp directly there. Yeah. We can now warp to Lake Hylia. Ah, thank you for telling me about the Iron Boots. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. It's not too far outside of Kakariko Village, which is at the bottom of Death Mountain Trail, which we're trying to get down right now. So let's jump off the edge here. Why not? Do a little roll. It's like a reverse Indiana Jones this time, following the boulder. go. We're even closer now. Instead of calling you Pona, there's actually a pretty quick way in which you can get to Zora's River. You just run along the water's edge right here, and you don't have to navigate too much land or any water for that matter, so far as swimming goes. And then pretty much, yeah, we're right there in Zora's River. Here we are. Now the shortcut that we set up when we were kids by planting the magic beans is that we now have this leaf as a transport which will quickly bring us up over and through Zora's River here we go one alright there we go yep. as usual we come up here we're gonna play Zelda's Lullaby to uh Part the waters, if you will. There we go. I love that those three notes, those three buttons, form a, uh, a, a triforce. You ever notice that? The, the triangles. If you put them together. Anyway. Uh, okay, so here we go. Talk to the king. Ooh, this is well, hmm, hmm, eye drops. You might say we have them, you might say we don't. But we do have the ingredients. If you take the ingredients to the doctor at the lake laboratory, he can make the eye drops for you, but you need, you need to deliver them fresh. Can you make it before they spoil? Yes, we can. And check it out, I love this little guy. The eyeball frog. He's cute. I love animated frogs. They're giant eyes. Alright, here we go. Three minutes. Three minutes to deliver a cold frog to a doctor by a lake. Only in Zelda. So off we go. We cannot warp. 
We cannot pass go. We cannot collect two hundred dollars. Yeah, we have to go the slow way, uh, which is to just run down the river here. Um, and that's the thing with all of these trading, this whole trading sequence, and each item ingredient that we must deliver from point A to point B. The timed ones you cannot warp. Um, anyway, there's some rules. That's the biggest one. Uh, if you do, the timer just becomes null and void, and so your quest as well. So, with two minutes remaining, we are swimming in almost out of Zora's River. We'll need to then jump on Epona. Probably call her first. Yep, she's not here. And then we race to Lake Hylia, uh, to that kind of cool looking building slash lighthouse by the lake. Where are you, girl? There she is. All right, Epona, we gotta, we gotta go. Make haste. You see that? Right over the fence. Not a problem at all. And yet, the next time I try that, and I run right up to a fence, I'll be blocked like it's a big old invisible wall. As, it, pretty frustrating. Anyway, of course, these are 99 if you're going quickly, going fast. Uh, those are always jumpable, but it's the, it's the short fences that surprise you sometimes. At least they do me. And again, I'd love to know if I'm if I'm the only one, or if you guys share that frustration. The invisible wall, you know, the sometimes thing. Okay, here we go. With 45 seconds to spare. Lakeside Laboratory. Sounds like it came out of a rush saw, Lakeside Park. Oh wow. I haven't seen an eyeball fog like this since Zora's Domain froze over. These eyes balls are so delicious. Tonight I will cook fried eyeballs for the first time in a long time. Such great stuff. Please say thank you to King Zora. Uh, what? These are for making bigger ones eye drops. Oh, how disappointing. You should have said so in the first place. A. Gross. B. Who would fry an eyeball? If you flash fried it, maybe. That's the kind of thing you might lightly poach. Pan sear? Possibly? Oven? Maybe. But, I mean, anyway. My culinary side's coming out. I'm literally... Alright, we've got four minutes on the clock. And I'm wondering about how an eyeball would react to different heat sources. Yeah, I spent... All of 2019, teaching myself everything there is to know about cooking. Mostly uh, savory type of cooking, baking, pizza doughs, breads. Um, I watched probably a million hours of Food Network television, websites, different chefs, cookbooks. Yeah, 2019 was culinary year. And uh, I got my own home honorary chef degree. Anyway, I spent... You, you can just ask my family, man. Um, I had to get all the, the right tools. You know, uh, all the, the cool gadgets and tools and toys for the kitchen. Anyway, I spent a lot of time. And then I, I stopped. It's how I am with things. I kind of... I do them. I master them to the degree in which I feel comfortable that I know I've achieved a certain level of success and then I, I'm good I stopped and I don't really care to cook much anymore I love food I do work at a restaurant part-time so that part of me is always active I'd love to own a restaurant someday but I've been there done that and I've done that with other things as well um, I master them 
to the degree in which I feel I've mastered them, uh, whatever it might be, and I move on. Uh, it's like, done it. Anyway, that's kind of how my mind works. I guess I'm always ready for the next thing. However, I have always come back to something creative. For me, it's digital art. I cannot do, I am not a traditional artist. I can't put pen or ink or, or paint to paper or canvas. However, I can create digitally. Uh, I've worked with Photoshop, Avid, graphic design, and, and everything in and in between uh, for 30 years at least. My college degree is in that. I worked professionally in the TV and film industry for many years on the back end, providing all the cool tools that filmmakers use to create media and content. I was the guy who sold them, trained them how to use them, spoke at seminars and music groups across the country in Canada, where there was like 500 to 1,000 people at a time. Um, yeah, that's my thing. It's the creative field, and I'll always come back to that. I'll never get to a point where I feel I've mastered it. No. Um, because I, I learn with every project, and I want every project to be better than the last. And therefore, yeah, I know that that's something that I'll never tire of, is the creative field, uh, video, uh, graphic design, images, photography, shooting stuff with both video and still. And that's my thing. And I'm, half, I'm pretty good at it. So, but I enjoy it. That's, that's what happens next. So, it means a lot to sum this up that you guys are here and watching. In a way, it's a fulfill fulfillment of a dream. And you guys are making that come real. So I thank you. Making this, for making my dreams come true. So, back to the story. I've been waiting for you, my eyes. All right, he needs his eye drops. Really? You brought the eye drops? I'm so relieved. I'm gonna use them right now. I love that sound effect. Wow, this is stimulating. It's working great. Now I can get back to my blade business. My work is not very consistent, so I'll give this to you so you won't forget. After a few days, please return. Just wait patiently. So we now have a claim check. Kind of a receipt. His promise that he's going to fix that sweet sword for us. Now, here's the thing. He said a few days. We can cheat the system by using the Sun Song. So if we play the sun song a few times, allowing day and night, dawn and dusk to occur, that is forwarding time. Literally, we're quickly transporting time, time traveling, uh, and allowing those few days to quickly pass, allowing us to get that sword even quicker. Otherwise, we'd have to wait around somewhere, literally, you know, Zelda length days in Hyrule Field or something. I'm way too impatient for that, so I play the song. I think that's uh, maybe the third time.
number four. Right, so that brought the night. Okay, let's bring the dawn again. It's such a cool... I love this. I love time travel. My favorite sci-fi subject, bar none, hands down. Very favorite. Let's see if that's enough. It is. He's gonna trade his, the sword for the claim check. That sword is my finest work. There you go, guys. The bigger and sword. You know, I hope I'm saying that right. I don't see how else to say it. Uh, it's a weird word, like a m m contraction of two words. So, we have it. Let's equip it and use it. It looks so, and the Master Sword looks so tiny next to it. Here we go. Oh, love the sword. Love it. I know, it's your finest work. And I uh, thank you, sir.